He is known for being an English statesman, scholastic philosopher, theologian, scientist, and Bishop of Lincoln. He is recognized for his immense contributions to the tradition of scientific thought in medieval Oxford and the modern English intellectual tradition. His name is Robert Grostest. In the small village of Stradbrook, a humble boy named Robert Grostest began his journey that would forever shape the course of intellectual thought in England. Born to modest parents in Suffolk, Robert displayed a remarkable thirst for knowledge from a young age. His insatiable curiosity led his parents to encourage him to study various disciplines, including philosophy, theology, and the arts. Little did they know that their son would go on to become one of the most influential figures in medieval Oxford and leave a lasting impact on the modern English intellectual tradition. As Robert grew older, his brilliance became evident to those around him. His profound understanding of the sciences and his ability to synthesize knowledge set him apart from his peers. It was during his time at Oxford that he truly blossomed as a scholar. His contributions to scientific thought were so significant that A.C. Crombie, a renowned historian, hailed him as the real founder of the tradition of scientific thought in medieval Oxford, and in some ways, of the modern English intellectual tradition. Robert Grostest's teachings and insights transcended the boundaries of academia. His philosophical concepts touched on the interconnectedness of the natural world and the divine, paving the way for a new way of thinking. His belief in the power of reason and observation laid the foundation for the scientific method, emphasizing the importance of experimentation and empirical evidence. Through his profound contributions to philosophy, theology, and science, Robert Grostest left an indelible mark on the intellectual landscape of England, inspiring generations to come. Robert Grostest, a renowned philosopher and theologian, embarked on a remarkable scholarly career that would shape his understanding of the world and leave a lasting impact on those who followed his teachings. While little is known about his early education, Grostest's journey as a scholar began to unfold in the late 1180s or early 1190s when he served as a witness for the Bishop of Lincoln, showcasing his intellectual prowess. However, it was his time in the household of Bishop William de Vere of Hereford that truly set him on a path of intellectual discovery. During this period, Grostest's skills and talents were recognized by many, including Gerald of Wales, who wrote a letter praising his abilities. Despite not holding any official position in the households of Bishop William's successors, Grostest continued to pursue his studies, possibly with the support of Hugh Foliot, the Archdeacon of Shropshire. His travels took him to France and he even served as a papal judge delegate, further expanding his knowledge and experiences. By 1225, Grostest had obtained the benefice of Abbotsley and became a deacon. While there are differing opinions on whether he began teaching theology at Oxford in the same year or used his ecclesiastical income to study at the University of Paris, it is clear that by 1229-30, he was lecturing at Oxford as the lector in theology to the Franciscans. He held this position until March 1235, and it is believed that he may have also been appointed Chancellor of the University of Oxford during this time. Grostest's influence as a master of theology extended beyond the lecture halls. He served as Archdeacon of Leicester, a canon in Lincoln Cathedral, and trained the Franciscans in the standard curriculum of university theology. One of his most famous disciples was Roger Bacon, who would go on to develop an interest in the scientific method inspired by Grostest. Through his lectures, sermons, and writings, Grostest delved into various theological subjects, emphasizing the importance of the natural world in theological reflection. His works revealed his unique perspective and personal views, setting him apart from his scholastic contemporaries. Grostest's ability to read Greek sources and his desire to communicate his vast knowledge in a systematic manner are evident in his theological index. Despite facing challenges, such as a severe illness in 1232 that led to his resignation from most of his benefices, Grostest remained committed to his intellectual pursuits and sought to share his insights with others. Robert Grostest, the Bishop of Lincoln, was a man of deep conviction and unwavering principles. His tenure as bishop was marked by his relentless pursuit of reform and his dedication to upholding the authority of the church. One of his most significant contributions was his innovative program of visitation, which involved inspecting not only monasteries but also the deaneries in each archdeaconry of his diocese. This bold move brought him into conflict with various privileged institutions, including his own chapter. From 1239 to 1245, Grostest found himself embroiled in a heated dispute with his chapter, who challenged his right to exercise the right of visitation over their community. Seeking resolution, the chapter appealed to the papacy. It was during this time that Grostest attended the First Council of Lyon in 1245, hoping for a ruling in his favor. And indeed, the papal court ruled in his favor, solidifying his authority and strengthening his position as bishop. Grostest's commitment to the church's hierarchical structure was unwavering. 
He firmly believed in upholding the prerogative of the bishops and asserted that it was impossible for a bishop to disregard the commands of the Holy See. However, he was not afraid to challenge secular powers when they encroached upon the liberties of the national church. In 1238, he boldly demanded the release of certain scholars who had assaulted the legate Otto Canidus, despite the potential consequences. His dedication to the church and his countrymen was further exemplified in his participation in the Great Council. In 1244, Grostus sat on a committee that rejected a demand for a subsidy and successfully thwarted King Henry III's attempt to divide the clergy from the baronage. He famously stated, It is written that united we stand and divided we fall, emphasizing the importance of unity in the face of adversity. As Grostus's life and episcopacy neared its end, he found himself in a conflict with the new Archbishop of Canterbury, Boniface of Savoy. In 1250, he journeyed to the papal court to voice his grievances against Boniface and the Pope himself. While personal animosity between Grostus and the Pope was evident, the Pope agreed to most of Grostus's demands regarding the functioning of the English Church, highlighting the influence and respect he commanded. Grostus's unwavering commitment to reform and his willingness to challenge both secular and religious powers continue to inspire us today. His story reminds us of the importance of standing up for our principles, even in the face of opposition. It teaches us that unity and perseverance can lead to positive change, and that it is our duty to protect the liberties and values we hold dear. As we navigate the complexities of our daily lives, Grostist's philosophy serves as a reminder to never compromise on our convictions and to strive for a just and equitable society. Robert Grostist, an elderly man with an established reputation, was known for his fiery zeal and versatility as an ecclesiastical statesman. However, modern writers have often overlooked his scientific and scholarly achievements, focusing instead on his political and ecclesiastical services. But in his own time, the opinion of Grostist's contemporaries, as expressed by Matthew Paris and Roger Bacon, was very different. While they acknowledged his good intentions as a statesman, they also pointed out his flaws in temperament and discretion. Grostist was known to be critical towards everyone, regardless of their status, often expressing his opinions fearlessly. He even found himself in conflicts with the King, the Abbot of Westminster, and even Pope Innocent. Despite his shortcomings, his contemporaries saw him as the pioneer of a literary and scientific movement, recognizing him not only as a great ecclesiastic who patronized learning but also as the first mathematician and physicist of his age. In fact, he anticipated some groundbreaking ideas that would later be popularized by Roger Bacon. Grostist's legacy continues to be celebrated today. Bishop Grostist University in Lincoln bears his name and offers initial teacher training and academic degrees at all levels. In 2003, the university hosted an international conference in honor of the 750th anniversary of Grostist's death, highlighting his contributions to various fields. Furthermore, Grostist's knowledge and contributions to the sciences have earned him recognition. He was included in John Evelyn's Numismata, a discourse of medals under the section, Scholars and Divines, listed among other, famous and illustrious, individuals. In 2014, the Robert Grostis Society called for a statue to be erected in his honor, acknowledging his remarkable achievements. Grostis's reputation and legacy as both a scholar and a statesman serve as an inspiration for us in our daily lives. His unwavering commitment to fighting corruption, regardless of the person's position, reminds us of the importance of upholding moral values and standing up for what is right. Additionally, his pioneering work in the fields of mathematics and physics encourages us to embrace curiosity and push the boundaries of knowledge. Grostist's story reminds us of the power of determination, intellectual curiosity, and moral integrity in making a lasting impact on society. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.